Hey, what's up? This is Carl West. Thanks for joining in on the Image Maker series. This week, we got State Representative LaShawn K. Ford talking about the census. I mean, how you doing, LaShawn? All right. K. Ford, <laughs> State Rep. LaShawn K. Ford. Yeah, thanks for having me, Carl. But I'm at your home. This is your new home? You know, this is a home that we help. This particular podcast studio is a home that we built inside of Buffy's headquarters in Buffy. It's Black Knight of Fun of Illinois, in which I am the chairperson now. I've been actually celebrating my one year anniversary this month as the chairperson. So uh, in that regards, yes, this podcast studio is the home, uh, but Buffy is the home that Henry English built actually 35 years ago this year as well. And so uh, it's just been a, it's just, it's been a fun ride, man. I enjoy coming over here. Uh, bringing some new innovative ideas and thoughts to what's already been an amazing ship sailing along, doing great work in the community. Of course, Henry English is a stalwart in the community. So, and then of course, we just lost one of our pioneers, who was the founding board member, Dr. Conrad Worrell. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, and you see his picture right there on the wall. And so yeah. we just. We just doing the work, man, the people. Well, you know, I follow you, and I remember your comments about Dr. Uh, Conrad Ryle, about how he made it very difficult for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you read. I read your Yes, stuff yes, all yes. The time. He was, he was, he just was being Conrad because going through the struggle that they've been through, you know, who you trust, because remember, they was dealing with the COINTEL Pro, really huge. So, when they was part of the Black Panthers movement and all that stuff, fighting in the streets, and he was one of the intellectual ones. And Henry English was one of the Panthers, and they was all coming up. They had to worry about folks infiltrating their organizations going back. So he still has that concept that when he meets somebody or when they're going to bring somebody into their organization, he's really skeptical about it until he really, really, really gets a feel for you over a course of time. And plus what he said to me, uh, which was later, after we became really good friends and he became a mentor, that he had put a lot into two young brothers uh, who are my peers. I know who they are. I'm not going to say their names, but he had invested a lot into them. They were people that he was building up to be incredible leaders in the community. And then they end up uh, stabbing him in the back and mm -hmm. going against him after he had put so much into them for years. And he really felt bad about that to see those two young brothers turn against him. Um, and so he, so when he met me, he was extremely hard on me for a very long time. And then finally he realized that I was tough enough to take it. Because the average person, you know, coming the way he came at me, they would be feel. like, man, they'd be like, man, forget you, man. Right. I'm, I'm out of here. Yeah. But I stayed there because I knew his legacy and his history. And plus, at that time, Henry was already a friend of mine. So... And that's what he was trying to protect. Henry befriended you, and now he's bringing you to us. Yeah. We got to test you ourselves. And so, uh, and so, but you know, the last thing he said to me before he died was that he loved me. Oh, that's, and so yeah. I, that was the last thing he said to me two weeks before he died, because after that two week period, he was in such a vegetable state, unfortunately. Uh, but the last thing he said to me was that I love you. And I was like, wow. So I remember that. Well, I mean, your approach and my approach, I think we're about the same because I don't look for reasons to destroy relationships. Mm -hmm. I look for ways to just keep it. Not unless you just the. Uh, not unless you're just a toxic person that I got to get you out of my life. But Conrad wasn't toxic. He just was hard on you. He so, just wanted to you know. Stuck with it. He just wanted to know because, again, he understand that in this bit, when you build something for the community, they're going to always insert people to try to tear it down, figure out what's going on. And they dealt with that their whole lives, man. You know, growing up in the 60s and being power, you know, fighting for black power and freedom. And so he just... That was just part of his makeup, yeah. Because that's what who he was, and so uh, again, I won him over, and then you know, and every time his office, look, my office is across the street, and uh, every time uh, I would come into an office, I would go sit with him, and for hours, man, just talk. His office was right next to mine, mm. and so unfortunately, it's still there. Nobody has, uh, wow. you know, came in and cleaned it out yet, and it's still there. And I go by that sometimes and touch the window because you know him. He was yeah, just yeah. an amazing cat, man. That um, did so much for so many people. And so, anyway, enough about that. Yeah. Let's go into why you're here. You are here representing the uh, census, the U.S. census. Right. And tell me, 
Uh, what what district are you on the west side? I'm the eighth district. You're the eighth yeah. district on the west side. How long have you been a state rep? Uh, Thirteen and a half. Thirteen and a half years. So that means you did four terms. I three. Did, no, it's two year terms. It's two year so it's terms. Almost seven. Seven terms. Seven yeah, you terms. guys do do two year terms. Yeah. Wow. So here's what I want to ask you about the census. Ten years ago, you was present when the last census was upon us. Um, what was the numbers like on the west side? What percentage you think filled out the census? And with that question, follow up to that is, uh, I'm sure you expect to try to exceed those numbers, whatever they were. Yeah. So last census, we were about 60, 65 percent. That's pretty good. And it's, it's tough. We haven't gotten there yet, but I got to tell you, there's a great team led by Donald Dew. Mm -hmm. You know, um, HSI, he's got a collaboration. Great of not coalition. Just, yeah, yeah. Not just the West Siders, but South Siders. Yeah. This is something that's never happened. You know, to have the South Side and the West Side working together for a, a good cause. You got clergy and community yeah. organizations all part of I can't think of a name of it. Is it county? It's, it's the Chicago County. Chicago County Coalition. Chicago County Coalition. County Coalition, right. Yeah. CCC, right. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I know Donna do well. He's done well with that. I mean, he was very fortunate, of course, to get such a big piece of the census contract to baby do that kind of work but yeah like i said to him when i saw him a couple of weeks ago uh i said man look you've been in this business 30 yeah four years you earn the right to be in charge of something like this if anybody else yeah. we need him to be in charge of big things i mean we i'm a catholic we got catholic charities over things in our community that shouldn't be right you know we have um you know a lot of white organizations over black Nonprofits where they give out money to black nonprofits, and that that's got to change. It has to change. They got at least at least they have to be more inclusive to black organizations, especially one like Donald Do. Again, he got 35, 36 years in this business of doing tremendous work. Why wouldn't he uh, be a candidate to lead an organization uh, that will disperse money right. to community groups? Black community groups. Well, fortunate enough, the census was smart enough. The county yeah. was smart enough. And the state. And the state was yeah. smart enough to look at his credibility and give him this large piece of money that he has spent openly in all the right places. Of course, now let's see when it's all said and done how the numbers work out. Yeah, we got to give them. Uh, now, they were charged with the hard to count right. population. Communities, so right. it's very, very <laughs> difficult to right. um, deal with the hard to count population because, you know, the hard to count population don't believe in the census. And they hard to count. They hard to count. <laughs> and, you know, they're mobile. And, you know, a lot of times, they, like I said, they mobile, they move from place to place, but they also don't believe in government. Mm -hmm. They don't believe that this government that represent them is for them. So when folks knock on the door saying, hey, we're trying to do the right things by you as a family and the community, uh, we need you to participate. they like, no, we ain't never had no fair experience with the with the government. So why do we think that you going to come in here and do this for on my behalf? You're just going to count me, but not let me reap the benefits. Right. But that's, you know, no matter what, we need to be counted because, as you know, uh, Brother West, we were once counted as three fifths, and if we don't do anything but make sure that we count one whole, yes, count as let's, one let's whole. honor our ancestors. That should, you know what, you know what, we should come. That should the next ten years. That's gonna be the slogan. We was once three fourths of a yeah. of a person. Yeah. Now let's be counted as a whole person. We need to. We be. might have to. Keep that slug. Let's, let's keep it jot going. That, jot that down for ten <laughs> years from now. Yep. Yeah, you jot that down, our producer. Jot that down. <laughs> It was once three fourths of a person. Yeah. Now let's be counted as a whole person. Yeah, we. I mean, to know that when the first census was taken, they counted us as less than a whole person. Wow. That's horrible. And and that was not too long ago, if right. you really think about the history of this country. Right. That wasn't too long ago. So what was the? What were you tasked with doing? Uh, of course. I mean, it's pretty simple. You a state rep. Your job is to do to serve the people and do all the things you can do to help bring your community to uh, a, a quality of life. And so, but this particular assignment, were you partnering with the census, your office? Uh, what have you been tasked to do in, t in terms of going out, being a? I, I'm not gonna call you an ambassador of a spokesperson right. because you have a role already as in government. Right. But what was your task? Well, the first task was to make sure that we secured this money for to get it from the state and the black congratulations caucus thank for that. you we fought hard and we had great support from secretary ho um working with the west side and the other organizations across the state to get this money out i mean so that was number one um number two 
um, working to pull together all these organizations to agree that one organization like Donald Duda that has the, like HSI headed by Donald Duda has the capacity and agree that we should work with him and let him lead the charge. You know, that's difficult when people know that somebody's going to get $2 million to say, to disperse it out yeah. to everybody and everybody wondering, well, what's my fair share? Right. And why right. can't I be the right. lead? Exactly. But Donald, but HSI has been, they've proven you cannot be a black nonprofit for over 30 years and be strong and, and still be around because without, you, without you having a strong leadership yes and being effective and being effective the paperwork's got to be right and you know the, a to z you got to, to be z. on top of your game yep. and, and he's never had any discrepancies he's never That's had right. any problems so again when you're looking at dispersing that kind of funds to an organization he's top on the list yep. and i'm sure after this it's going to happen more All often right. for him and of course that People think that, oh, well, he's benefiting. No, his job, his task, again, is to disperse that money to the community. And the best way he know how to, to become, to make us victorious in whatever effort that we embark on, right now it happened to be the census. Right. I can guarantee you in the future, in the near future, he's going to have some other responsibilities as well. And he's, I think that he's going to, the group, I think there are about 30 organizations all together. It's 30, exactly. 30. Yeah, from, from reading the, the information, yeah. yeah. So they're, they're doing a great job from the south side to the west side, mm -hmm. and the numbers will be up. Especially, you and I were just talking about, it's been extended back to the date that it was supposed the original to date, be. which is October, August, Th October, October 31st. 31st. Yeah, the president, of course, wanted to cut it to September president Trump, 30. President Trump, not our local president, right. President Trump. <laughs> He wanted to cut it. Why do you think he wanted to do that? You know, he was kind of, um, I think he, he, it was all political. I mean, so, because, so I want to understand, how did the census have anything to votes, do with the election? Right. So why would he be impaled to want to, 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 to cut the, uh, the, 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 the deadline date? Yeah, so he whole lost, it, it, you know, he lost the battle to allow for migrants to be counted. Right. And so when he lost that, he was just throwing everything against the wall. And so, see what sticks. And, and the courts realized there's no reason to rush this. Why did the court take so long to do it? Though? I know. Why did, we, had, we, had the, we had the 11th and a half hour right, right now. And all of a sudden, when did the ruling come down? The ruling came down this morning. Just this morning. Just this morning. <laughs> because you remember, as we were saying, it was going to end on the 30th. Which is next, what, Tuesday? Next Tuesday, Wednesday, or Wednesday, Wednesday. Yeah. One of those dates. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. And then we would have to just sit back and wait. And wait and hope that... Um, that the numbers would pile yeah. up. Because even though even though that's the deadline of this promotion, that's the deadline for you to sign up. That's the deadline so for self-reporting. self, for self um, reporting. Okay. And so people will probably continue to go out and knock on doors, but self-reporting ends on... And self-reporting means what? That you could go online and okay. report, and um, and that's what's important, that people self-report. But other folks that can knock on your door and, and, have you and they can still count that right. as well, right. past that extended right. date. Yeah. Okay. But, you know, the goal is to make sure that people self-report that, that way it's right. All right. Yes. Um, enumerators, we will see what happens moving forward if enumerators are going to be extended past the 30. Okay, let's just say this. We're going to go data. Let's go with the data. What is the percentage that they that they want, not anticipate, that they want for self-reporting? Oh, yeah. We want an accurate count. We want a complete count. So that means that if you are a man, woman, immigrant, it doesn't matter who you are, you should be counted. And if you have a baby in your house, you should count your baby. If, that, you, if you just came home yesterday with a newborn baby, you got to count baby. that baby. Because, you know, it makes sense, especially black people, we should be counted. We need to get our numbers up. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't believe in in um, the $1,400 that they say that it's your worth per year for the census, at least recognize that's that the number. Want. That's the number. They, they're they reporting that it's $1,400 per person per year for the next 10 years. If you don't care about that, one, we talked about the three-fifths, and then we also need to know that you don't want to be a super minority in this country. You know, what are we going to get as black people if super our numbers minority? go down? Who's a super minority right now? You know, I, I, <laughs> I, it might be us. You know, we need to get our numbers up because I do believe that there are more black people than, than reported. Yeah. You know, so why don't we get our numbers up so that we can have strength? And, and Well, I mean, we stated it earlier and, and you stated, stated clearly that 
um, there's a large segment of people, if we wanted to give a number, just say 20% of, of the black community have a complete distrust for government. That's a large number when you're talking about a country of 50 million people. Right, right. That's and a I'll large tell you, number. Carl, so here are the people with the distrust. People that have criminal backgrounds, mm -hmm. uh, people that's unemployed, people that might be um, losing their house to foreclosure or something because they're struggling. So why? I really don't have time to think about that. Right. You know, so if I've been incarcerated. They've never counted me at my home address. They've always counted me at the prison. At the prison. And that's horrible. So, and when I'm in prison, you take away my right to vote. So I'm not a part of the system anymore. So when I walk out of prison, if when they counted, start counting you, the prisoners were counted on April 1st. That's the date that they were counted, wherever right. you were on that Even date. though we extended this date. Yes. So even if the prisoner got out of jail, yes. like right now, yeah. they wouldn't register. They wouldn't change his registration. No, nope. nope. they wouldn't still change be, his um, so you, residency. So you're talking about a, a, a prison that has, in a state, just say if Utah, that has 10,000 prisoners. All those 10,000 prisoners are being counted in Utah. In Utah, yeah. The federal. Regardless of where they come from. Right. And that's the problem. All our prisons down in, in rural so parts of Illinois, Illinois, man, they get all of our population count. And that money stays there for the next 10 years. They also get the head count. Right. And so they can use it however they want. And so what about, why don't the census go out and attract homeless and count they homeless are. people? They've been they doing can do it. that now? Yes, they have been um, so I thought they had home. to be in the residence. Yeah, a home you know, to have your name on an address at a house somewhere or living in at home. How do they determine if you're living at home? Yeah, they have a way to uh, we had a meeting um, yesterday with the West Side Black elected officials with the um, Census Bureau and how they do it I'm not sure but they are hitting um, places where individuals are um, sleeping in tents. And sleeping on the street, hmm. and they're counting them. They're counting them as residents yeah. of those tents, or just uh, in that city, yeah, I, in that little, in the area, in a zip code that they live in. in any probably in. count them in a zip code. Probably, I'm not sure. I don't want to say for sure. sure, but I do know that the census did say that they're counting them, and that's a good thing, you know, because we need that population in the city. Okay, so we have this extra month. And now that means that you, your job is not done. Yeah, that's that great. Mean, that means that you have to start circling the wagons, some different wagons, and some of the same wagons to make sure everybody in those wagons are counted. Yeah, because right now the numbers are, we, we're below 2010 in the city. And why do you think that is? Because the pandemic. The rock, no, the pandemic. The pandemic, um, really. And, of course, I think that um, people, you know, the census workers got off to a slow start because of the pandemic. And the reason I said Barack because at two ten he was in office. He was. And yeah. I'm thinking so maybe that was a maybe people felt compelled to do it for him. like they felt compelled to vote, vote for, for him. him. So yeah. it's because of the pandemic primarily. Yeah, that's it because the um, numerators and the census workers they got off to a slow start. They couldn't knock could on doors. Could knock on doors. They, you know. So now everybody's back up and running. You know. Now that we have a better sense of of the virus and how it's um and just affected. in your in your district how many numerators are on the street do you know oh no i'm not sure how many the that'd um, be hundreds. yeah it's hundreds yeah, yeah. and plus the and they all employed they're, they're, they're all employed right they're still these cats hiring. make what 25 dollars an hour 25, basically yes yeah. it's a it's a good job and they're still hiring right and what they're doing now if you know of a place where where there are um home, where there are crowds of people you can call the census and they will come out and they will um, come out and count the people. That's, that's in that crowd. That's in that crowd. But, but those people are not, not they're not at their home. But they will, if, if you see a crowd of people, they may have ID or they could just self-report. All they self got to do is say where they live. And, and they could call 844-330-2800. Three, three, Say it again. Yeah, 844-330-2020. And they can call that number and just report themselves. No, they could call that number to say, let's say I you see a crowd. Okay. And you say, you guys need to get over here. It's a okay. whole lot going on. Oh my, the cats on my block having a block party. They having a block party. They will come with their computers if you call 844 
three three zero twenty twenty and start counting them. And they would and they would and it's and it's probably a numbers game. It is a numbers right. game. How many if we got two hundred people in the block party, if we can walk away with just say seventy five good numbers, that adds to the count. That helps. Right. I mean because but what if what if what if they what if some people on that block that they count have already count it. Yeah. So they show up. Yeah. If they, they show yeah, they'll show immediately. If they've already registered as a. If, if they've already okay. counted themselves. Okay. Like you will not get a knock on your door. No, anymore. For, because you've already been counted. Right. I've been counted. I haven't gotten any mail. I haven't gotten a knock on the door or anything. So you got a foolproof system on this. Yeah. Thing, huh? And if people are looking for jobs, they can also call 312 um, 579-1500. Say it again. The 312-579-1500. If they're looking they wanna, for jobs. If they want to work for so the census. they got census. 30 days to have work. No, guess what? Even after the census is up, the jobs continue for counting and constantly getting everything in order. So even though the self-reporting period is over, they're still going to be so they made work. So a person who starts today, for instance, we have a month left. They can probably be working for an extra two months, or a total of three they months, can, possibly. They, some people, or longer. people work the census year round. The census is a is is constant. Really, you know, because the census. Is but they pretty, hire them just for this reason to right, go out. Right, but but those a lot of those jobs may go away. Okay, but there are new positions that or positions that they can move into, and what's amazing, people need to know also the census is important because when you want to look up the population of your community. That's what the census does. Right. If you want to um, look up um, how many black people live in your neighborhood, that's what the census give you. The census is huge. It gives you a lot of information about the demographics of your community. It's been a pleasure. Next time, Carl West presents Image Maker Series with our guest, State Representative LaShawn K. Ford. Till the next time, peace.